Hi there, Simon from simonwoods.com. I have five wines here that um, uh, they're either 100% Tempranillo or close to 100% Tempranillo. I'm not sure what the blend of the two Riocas I'm starting with is, but um, Tempranillo will be 80% of them. Um, so I've got two Riocas, uh, two from um, Tierra de Castilla, which is the large, almost like a van de pay, if you want to call it that. It's the region uh, from Madrid heading south and east, big La Mancha, that, that area. And the last one uh, to finish is, I think it's 100% Tempranillo, uh, from uh, South Australia. Uh, grown in vineyards within the Mount Lofty and McLaren Vale regions. Anyway, we'll get to that last, but uh, we'll start with the first one, uh, which you'll notice is um, uh, two-thirds gone. Uh, that's because somebody was here uh, an hour or so ago saying, oh, I fancy a glass of something, and uh, um, they said, oh, you're about to taste those. So they had a glass, and then someone else had a glass. And uh, Anyway, so the bottle's reasonably freshly opened, uh, but um, anyway, I'll just dig into it. Anyway, the wine itself, um, it's uh, Vigna Real Creantha 2000, 2011 uh, from Rioja and um, uh, Tempranillo, Garnacha and Mazuelo. Uh, give it a whirl. The sweet strawberry spice to this. Um, I can't remember the last time I had a jammy Dodger biscuit. I know they still exist, but that uh, slightly baked berry jam character coming through. But there's also a little bit of um, uh, fresh floral uh, edge. And sometimes I get orange peel coming through on, on Tempranillo, and there's just a little bit of that uh, slightly citrus freshness. It's a weird, bit weird sometimes having citrus with a red wine, but uh, I, that's what I get here. There's a juicy freshness about that. I mean, it's 2011, um, so coming up for its fourth birthday, uh, but still bright, fresh, uh, juicy, bright plum, red berry, and this citrus freshness, and this spice, and um, slight earthiness, warm earthiness of... Uh, uh, like a dusty warmth on, on the finish. I like it, uh, and uh, the finish has this bit of grip to it that makes me think, I, I thought at first I might be able to uh, think, oh, it's going to be quite nice just by itself. The person who had the glass earlier didn't have any problem having it by, by itself, but uh, I think it, it's, it would be all the better for some slightly fatty food. Um, but, uh, yeah, nice enough wine. Uh, let's see what uh, its stable mate uh, is like. Cune uh, Rioja Creantha, again 2011, um, and um, it says mainly from Tempranillo, uh, one year in American and French oak. Let's give it a whirl. Now, this smells a little bit uh, firmer, is that the right word? Um, it's, it feels like it's in a slightly different style, a bolder, uh, more upright style. Maybe if you wanted to put them in French terms, the first one is more veering towards that softness uh, of either ripe burgundy or, or the Rhone and um, the Cunet is a bit more uh, Bordeaux, slight, not stubborn, but uh, yes, a, a little bit more upright and uh, uh, yes, yeah, classically fruity. Then when you taste it, that's when the warmth and generosity kicks in. So there's this, yes, there's this backbone of tannin. Uh, but there's that little bit of coconut that the, uh, that the American oak will be giving to it. There's a softness. Uh, nothing has gone... I was talking about jammy dodger on the previous one. Here it feels like the fruit has, is ripe, but not, not to... Uh, it hasn't gone to, to any bits of uh, overripe. I don't know in the previous one where is that, that, that uh, little bit of jamminess was from the mazuelo, which is the same grape as carignan, which can, in some parts of the world, uh, veer towards the raisin if you pick it a little bit too late. But here you've got this warm, again the dustiness, warm, dusty berry flesh. Maybe not as much of the orange peel as in the previous one, uh, but uh, it feels like there's, yeah, there's a little bit more concentration of flavour. Maybe not the perfume, and it's, it's interesting seeing the two side by side. Um, I imagine there are some days I prefer one, other days I prefer the other. Uh, today, I, the cune is looking really nice, and uh, so I'm going to have another sup. Mm, do you like that? Good. Uh, right, the next two. So these are the ones from um, Castilla-La Mancha. And um, well, so Vino de, de la Tierra um, de Castilla. And um, this one uh, from the same winery. Uh, it's called the Tinedo Winery. And um, this is the Basico, Basico, uh, Tempranillo 2014 uh, Organic. And it's just got a B for Basic on. Let's give it a whirl and see whether it lives up to B for Basic or G for Good. 
Actually, I've just uh, checked the bottle. It doesn't actually it say uh, Tierra de Castilla on um, this one. It says it on the on its big brother. Um, so it just says produce of Spain. So uh, it could be a blend from uh, from various places. But yes, yeah, stick my nose in. And it smells young, it smells juicy, it's got that um, little edge of reduction, as if the, oh, the wine has, well it's been in a screw cap, so I've only just opened it. So it, it feels like it needs a little bit more um, aeration to uh, to come out of its shell. You want to coax it, say, come on, come, 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 come Simon. Um, uh, but the fruit is uh, that dark cherry, a little bit of uh, really very, very dark raspberries. And it smells like it's going to be young, what I call crunchy red wine. And you taste it, and this is quite ex exotic uh, floral rose petal character that's uh, that's in there. A um, little bit of chewy tannin. Uh, there's this red, uh, this raspberry and then uh, strawberry character, and then this overtone of uh, floral, um, yeah, floral characters that just seems to uh, uh, come in waves. Feels like a wine that I would be interested to uh, pour a glass out and uh, try it. Try it every half hour over over the course of uh, a few hours. Have to be quite a big glass, you understand. Uh, but um, mm, I like that. It's got a little. This chewiness makes me want to come back for more. There is this slight edge of jamminess there, uh, but it's not gone into that uh, really dark raisiny baked fruit that can be a problem if you're in the hot, hot parts of Spain where the grapes just ripen too quickly or the and, and start to shrivel up. But here, there is freshness, there is life, there is a vivacity about it. And it may be in a few hours it's gone, Bruh. but um, I, will, I will report back on that because I, I, I like that. Let's see what Big Brother's like. So this is called Ya, yeah! um, and it has some rather splendid uh, elbows and hands and eyes and lips and uh, various other parts of the body. Uh, and uh, fortunately nothing below the belt on the label. Uh, so this is 2013 and this is Vino de la Tierra de Castilla. Um, and again organic, let's give it a whirl. Funny, it's, it seems to be not as deep in colour and when I smell it, it doesn't smell of quite as much um, as, the, uh, as the previous one. Um, I don't know whether that's uh, well, this this has come with a cork, so it should it should be a little bit more um, ready to come out of its shell as soon as you open it, rather than the screw cap one. But um, yeah, this I mean, it feels like there is some softness and spice and some red fruit here. But um, yeah, it feels like it's a wine that needs maybe a little bit more coaxing. So I'll do some coaxing. I'll be back in a moment. When you taste it, um, there's an edge of the medicinal about it and um, that floral character that I was finding in the previous one, that's there in the background, but it feels like the wine itself got more grip, uh, more intensity. And um, uh, one of the problems with Tempranillo um, is that it's prone to uh, reduction. Uh, it, so in, if you don't get air into the wine, it can start sucking into itself. Here, I, it almost feels like the wine has slightly sucked into itself and um, it's going to take a long while to, to burst out and say, hello, here I am. Happy days are here again. But it um, feels like there's a concentration there. There's this uh, generous fruit uh, and there's this spicy edge and that floral character flitting in and out. Um, but so whereas the first one, that's the one for, that says, hello, here I am today. This feels like I want to pour it out today and drink it tomorrow. Mm, I'm going to have to keep coming back to that because it's, uh, it's growing on me. Um, and um, what I liked about the first one I like here, it doesn't feel like someone's trying too hard to get things really ripe. There's a juiciness about it, and um, yeah, it feels like there's uh, more, to, more to come from that fella. Uh, let's try the final one. Uh, so we are in Australia with this one uh, from the S&C winery. Uh, so there's just a, it doesn't say much on the, wine, on, on the front label apart from uh, is that an American Indian. Um, but um, and S and C is the name of the winery. I'm presuming there's uh, uh, there is uh, somebody whose initial is S. It says winemaker Steve Grimley, artist David Baraka. So I don't know where the C comes in. But um, great anyway. 2013 South Australia Tempranillo, uh, Mount Lofty Ranges and McLaren Vale. Tightly woven Tempranillo. Blah blah blah. Good for the next five years or so. Let's see whether it's good for the next five minutes or so. 
Tempranillo seems to be having a, a little bit of a surge in popularity in, uh, in Australia. It's been there for quite a while. I think it was it was it Coriol in uh, McLaren Vale who's, who's been doing it since maybe even the 80s. Um, certainly from the, from the 90s onwards. Um, but um, sometimes uh, there and uh, some of the other wines that you get, there was this edge of mintiness, the eucalypt that um, I, in small amounts, is, is good. In large amounts, it tends to really dominate the wine. Here, I get more of a, a, a fresh, earthy, uh, almost leathery character that uh, reminds me that with that softness and sweetness, uh, it's it has it's more of the South Australian veering towards the Shiraz rather than and I don't want my Tempranillo to taste of Shiraz but um, um, it feels like they've managed to tame that uh, over the top um, uh, eucalyptus character and uh, it, there's something here that is uh, when I think of of, of uh, uh, Tempranillo versus Syrah uh, there's more of a savoury edge uh, coming through so less overt berry fruit there is berry here. Uh, but uh, yes, it feels like there's um, a little bit more uh, life beyond fruit, if you want to call it that. Oops, I nearly dribbled then. Um, yeah, that savoury character carries on through. Um, there's the berries, the plums, a little bit of the some dried fruit there, some uh, dried cherries or, or something. And there's this uh, streak of acidity, and um, I'm just wondering whether how natural that is, because there seems to be a little bit of hardness. Uh, on, on, on the finish that um, doesn't sit in with that weighty fruit. Um, I like it, but um, I don't like it as much as I thought I was going to like it from, from the smell. It may be that it just needs a little bit more time to come out of its shell. As with, um, as with virtually all of them, apart from uh, wine number four, it's got the screw cap on, so it will be all the better for another uh, 20 minutes or so for it to, uh, uh, to, to, to flesh out. But... Um, yeah, nice, not great. I, in terms of my favourites, um, I like the, the middle three. I, I, I like the Vignerelle was 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 quite nice. They were a nice set of five wines. I, I think that there's uh, there are occasions on which I'd, I'd happily uh, get my get my way through a glass of each of them. But if I were to be given a glass of uh, well, at the moment the one I'd, I'd probably want a second glass of most. It might even be this Basico, uh, but the Cune was nice, and uh, I have high hopes for the uh, Ja. Um, I don't know why it's uh, it's after the German for yes, but um, maybe it's just all those uh, hands on the label and those strange pink bits of the body. I think I hope they're lips, um, but uh, anyway, I'll go away, and um, I will say see you soon.